this time of year but uh vacuum forming uh that's the biggest one i've ever seen now over at uh, the air force museum they built um displays for recruiting recruiting stations and uh they build or the pentagon or something like that where they need a model of an airplane and they build theirs out of uh Hardwood. Hardwood? Yeah. They use wow. a hardwood to build their to, to build their models out of. And um, they do it by doing uh templates. Uh, and and the models are I wanna say not they're not the uh, museum scale because that's three three sixteenths to an inch. Um but they're 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 large large models that they use for recruiters' offices, uh, Pentagon, Air Force Museum. Um, Would it be for one air aircraft? Yeah, one aircraft at a time. Um, I and how a, how would they go about? How would they use a template? Uh, they would would they use it to run a milling machine or something that would well first off you cut the uh, you lay out the fuselage side per se down the length of the wood and then you cut that out and then you lay with what a bandsaw okay and then you, then you take that and put the template on the top, and you cut cut the uh, template the same from the top down. So that gives so you. So you're talking about a flat template to get the outline. Absolutely. The the up upper and lower profile of the aircraft. I got it. Right, and then you you got your stations marked off down the side. Right. And you put templates, and you just whittle away till you get it so that template fits. I see. Now I, you, see. I do the same thing with uh, styrofoam. That's an, it's, it's a lot easier to manipulate the styrofoam than it is wood. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, But wood's a lot more fun if you got strong hands. Uh, and you got proper chisels and stuff to go. Oh with. yeah, yeah. Knives, whatnot. Yeah. Have you seen, um, oh gosh, what's the name of that? Uh, it's a YouTube show on model airplanes. I'll think of it in a minute, but they they build a lot of uh, aircraft, model aircraft, and these are flyables yes. out of, out of, uh, out of, uh, uh, it's, well, it's like depends. a foam, foam core board. Yeah, it's, um... Depending on what you're building, and uh, the biggest thing I've seen fly so far has been a, uh, a C-17 um, jet powered. Uh, the other biggest thing I've seen is a B-29. In fact, if you saw the movie, uh, was it the Rising Sun or something like that? With uh, Christian Bale was the the young boy in the Japanese prisoner of war camp. And no, I don't camp. see that. Was, I, I don't remember it. I remember the name, the Rising Sun. Well, the P-51s that flew by, there was one P-51, real P-51. All the rest of them were uh, Models. Controlled models and the B-29 that flew in the in the thing was a radio controlled model. Mm -hmm. uh, 
a lot of the uh, they have a uh, they fly a lot of RC down here, um, and the, they they have some really big stuff. I mean, but they a lot of them went from gas to uh, electric. Yeah. So yeah, electric powered uh, RC stuff, and they got some pretty big ones down here too. Because a uh, uh, House of Hobbies. Uh, and I don't even know if he's still open or not. On US 19. Um, yeah, you told me about him before. He had a uh, he had a big uh, Sky Raider in, in there. And I don't like to buy stuff from him because he always jacks up his prices. <laughs> sure. But, but he's a, he's a, he's all right. He's he's somebody I could talk to at the time. But I don't know where he's been because every time I've been by there lately, he's been closed. So he was talking about retiring some time ago. I don't, guess maybe he did. But he goes like to Montana every year to hunt deer or goat or something. Yeah. Up there. Let's stick with models for a little bit. I'm I'm really curious about doll houses. You said they were um, one to a hundred scale. Yeah, it's one inch to a one one inch to a foot. Okay. It's supposed to be one inch to a foot. So that's one to ten, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, one to ten. Okay. The, you, the, the dollar, are there any other standards that you can share? Uh, for dollhouses, no. Uh, Is there? Are there websites for people who want to build a dollhouse to get some plans or you just well, sort of have to make it up? Thing, the only thing I've seen is it's been in kits. All right. But then I haven't, I haven't, yeah, I haven't been looking out on the internet for them. Um, Hobby Lobby used to sell them. Uh, Michael's used to sell them. Because uh, I bought one from Michael's. Uh, what were they ago. made out of? Uh, really thin plywood. I mean, you know, like one layer, two layer. Not 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 very thick. Uh, and then you get all the. Uh, Where little... would you buy that kind of plywood in the hobby store? Uh, I know that uh, Hobby Lobby has some thin woods. Um, if you were so inclined, you might be able to get some at, uh, oh, what the hell's the name of that place? There's a place down on 19 between uh, between Roots between US 60 and, oh. Well, I'll never get out of there, so do, don't, don't trouble yourself with trying to remember where it is, because without a name, I would never find it. It's, uh, I used, when I was doing woodworking, I used to go there to get uh, router bits and, and right. hinges and stuff like that for, for uh, making, you know, furniture type deals. Where's a good place to buy piano hinges? I guess off the internet, probably. Yeah, for you, probably. Although you might find somebody locally. Depends on how fast you want them. Um, the, the place I was trying to tell you about down on 19, they, they carry them. And you, you know, different lengths. That's where I got my piano hinges for this cabinet over here that I built. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of cabinets, um, do you have those European hinges in your house, where you where you can you can um, they actually snap together? You snap and together. Un unsnap, so you can yeah. take the door off. Yeah. Yeah, those things. That, that that was like pulling hen teeth to find those things 
to replace. There's so many different varieties. It was just a pain in the butt to replace the ones that I had broken. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Let's see if you can. Can you see that over there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Tilt up a little, a little bit more. Tilt up. There you go. Got All it. Right. That's got it. Yeah, I built that. Yeah, you were telling me about that. That's really, I'm envious. That's really nice. And if you if you can see those hinges right next to the uh, paper towel rack. Yeah. The wall, yeah, those are those are the European hinges. Absolutely. I bought them yeah. at, the, at the place down on 19. Yeah. Cool. Well, it used to be closer, but. <laughs> Now that's US 19 on on the uh, on the west side of Tampa Bay, right? I didn't know that US 19 was on the other side of Tampa Bay. <laughs> well, you live on the other side of Tampa Bay, right? Yes. Okay, if you're in Pinellas. Yeah, I'm in Pinellas. Yeah, I just um, my geography knowledge of that area is limited because I don't travel over there much. Have you ever flown out of uh, that airport? Um, trying no. to think of that's it's really really kind of interesting location. I have very few people yeah, coming over. Where the Coast Guard is. I don't. I don't know. Well, you know, when when I first moved down here, Pat still had her. Uh, was still allowed to have her ID from her previous marriage. And she used to go over there because they had a, uh, well, what the hell they call that now? A store, the military, um, military store. Um, surplus, surplus store? No, 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 no. Uh, a uniform store? Where we used to buy, uh, uh, like a PX? PX. Only it was uh, it was for it was just you know basically the Coast Guard showed up there, but anybody else? I mean, you know, hell, when I was when I was when I was in the service, my wife used to go over to my first wife used to go over to uh, uh, the fort right there in. Uh, Washington, D.C., uh, right down along P Street. Um, McNair? Was it McNair? I thought Fort McNair. No. Fort oh, McNair. that's in Virginia. No, no, that's uh, that's up by Baltimore. Um, no, not McNair. Uh, Henry J. McNair. Uh, well, anyhow, it's where the U U.S. Army War College is. And it's right down there on the on the crux of uh, Anacostia and Potomac River. Um, but she used to go in the PX there and buy all of her meats. <laughs> was uh, this southeast DC? Yes. A bowling field? No, across the river Anac from bowling field. Oh, that's that's the Navy Yard. No, Navy Yard is further up. Oh, okay. Oh, you're not talking about Belvoir. No, that Belvoir is in Virginia. Belvoir is in Virginia. Or Belvoir is in Virginia down near. Uh, but if you're on the other, Virginia okay, Bay. that's the other side of the Anacostia River. I don't know of any right. army forts in there. Anyway, going going back to the the um, ship of the line and earlier ship models. Yeah. Um, how how did you find out that the uh, uh, Spanish ships were built in Italy. Uh, it was on the uh, boob tube last night. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. What did, what did you watch? Uh, it was Discovery or something like that. Oh, really? One, one, wow. one, you know, it's one of the Discovery channels. Uh-huh. Uh, what was the, Was it about explorers or was it about ships? So I can look for it. I would. It was about the war between England and Spain. Ah. As England became the new superpower, right? 
with the, with their navy. And you know the thing about uh, the Mary Rose was she heeled over and got a gust of wind and it just capsized her. Yeah, she was too heavy. Yeah, too imbalanced. Well, ninety guns. Yeah. She had yeah, but she guns. was loaded down with a lot of other stuff from King Henry. Yeah, well, the thing of it was, she didn't have that many bronze cannons. Most of her cannons were cast. Right, cast iron, huh? Cast iron or uh, raw iron. Raw iron? Wrought. Wrought, Wrought iron. iron. Yeah. Yes, wrought iron. Well, that's, that's, I think that's the same thing as cast. Well, they, they claimed it was two different things, depending on the mm -hmm. size of the gun. And the thing of it was, is that it took a long time to cast a, a bronze cannon, whereas we're using cast iron, they could do it quick, 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 and do multiples in the time that it would take to cast yeah. one bronze cannon. And they were and they were heavy enough to uh, take the charges that they were using. I wonder what the range of a like a twenty four pounder was, maybe a hundred yards. Well, they had to get in. All, all depends uh, on how much powder you got behind it. Yeah, but if if you got a cast iron uh, tube, and you're you're firing a uh, a twenty four pound ball, you know uh, there's a limit as to how much powder you can put behind it. Uh, yeah. Space wise and pressure wise. Well, you know, it's it's kind of like you ever shot black powder? No. Oh. It's kind of like uh, shooting black powder. The thing of it is, is that shooting black powder today, smoke smokeless black powder, they call it smokeless, it's not. Um, you actually are supposed to use less because it's a quicker igniting uh, power than you would have used if you had been using uh, regular black powder. Well, I thought regular black powder was really slow compared to modern. To it's slow to no. burn. Now, the thing of it is, is that the reproduction weapons that are built today are made out of uh, armory steel or whatever you want to call it nowadays but it's it's regular uh stuff that you'd make a, a, a modern firearm out of so you have now a what, lot what, what was this you said replicas yeah right because i i used to a friend of mine had a uh not a colt what was the other one remington yeah uh, a, a Remington, I think it was. Was a revolver or was revolver. a rifle? Revolver. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, you 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 put your black powder in, you put your ball in, you put your bear grease over top of the ball, and then the last thing you do is put the the caps on the nipple before you fire it. And that damn thing weighs a ton. I couldn't, I could not hold it and aim it without using both hands. Now, this was what type of weapon? It's a cap and ball revolver. Was it a single shot? No, it's a revolver. So it's got six shots. Six shots, but you have to, you have to cock it each time you want to fire it. Yeah, but you 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 were you were talking about loading a cartridge. Yeah, you the cylinder. Oh, well, you. Oh, well, wait a minute. The, the cylinder. The, the cylinder. The revolver cylinder. So you had to load each one of those cylinders separately. Wow, I didn't know that. That's interesting. That's why. That's why a lot of guys carried extra cylinders, so that they could. Yeah. Snap Snap the one out, snap another one in, and keep keep going. I had never heard of it. That's really fascinating. If you see, what was that? Pale Rider. Yeah. 
if you watch Clint Eastwood in Pale Rider, he takes and snaps a cylinder out of the pistol he's using and snaps another one in. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that and that's basically cap and ball, although it's like a speed loader nowadays. You take a cylinder, you you slap the take the cylinder out, you slap extra, take a speed loader and load the back of it, and you put it in a in a container around your belt so that you can pull it out. Or that's like know, having two clips taped together. I've done that too. <laughs> I did that in Vietnam with the 30 caliber. Why were you carrying the 30 caliber? Because of because a M1 carbine with a grip, a, a side grip, one that's that slides down to the side, is a lot easier to carry when you're flying on a helicopter than carrying an M14. Is it, is it, um, you, you said it was an M1? M1 carbine, 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 carbine. Yeah, you want to so it loaded, it had a clip that loaded from the side? No, from the bottom. From the bottom. And what yeah. was off to the side? It had a grip? The back of the stock was a swing out. Hmm. We, you grabbed it, was it around and, and, it, and it gave you the stock that you could mount up, you know, put in your shoulder and fire. But it wasn't wood, it was steel, right? It was, yeah. it was steel with a metal butt, butt yeah, plate. Yeah, with a butt plate. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. My, my uncle, uh, Jim, who lived across the street from us, was a major, actually, he was in World War II, he's a ranger. And he said that. M1 was was a super accurate mm -hmm. weapon. <clears throat> M, the M1 car, uh, the M1 one rifle, which is 30 out six, basically. Well, what is a carbine compared to a rifle? Carbine is shorter. That's what I shorter thought. Shorter and it carry and it carries basically a uh, a pistol caliber. All right, it's a it's it, to me it's a pistol caliber round. It's it's smaller than thirty caliber. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, but you it, said you were an armorer at one yeah. point, right? Yeah, was in Vietnam. Yeah, crew serve weapons. But the thing of it is, not to, no sense being an armorer because you you take the part off and you send it to the depot to get it fixed, you know, so. What, did you have a school for becoming an armorer or did you no, learn that OJT? Just Yeah, OJT, it. yeah. You know, yeah. The OJT, odd job training. Yeah. <laughs> now on the job training. <laughs> you can call it on the job if you want to. I call it odd job. Most of my life I've done that on the job training, had to teach myself <clears throat> a lot of my professions. So um, I wonder, I wonder where the, the, the going back to, I got this ship of the line on, yeah. on my brain, where the Spanish built their ships and where the French built their ships. I can see where the Germans didn't have many ships because they didn't have much coastline. No, that's true. And and the um, and I believe the Venetians were real big on shipbuilding because they were such a uh, trading powerhouse. Yeah, and that's I think that's probably where a lot of the uh, uh, Spanish ships were built. Um, the on the other side of the country. Wow. Yeah. Portuguese, I can't say too much about because I don't know. Yeah. They, they seem to have gotten out there all right. And you know, the thing of it is, is that I was told that the uh, the ships that uh, Columbus had were uh, were built in Portugal. So I, that's why nobody knows what <laughs> why they were called what they were. Yeah. 
And I I thought you were saying they were they were they were built in in uh, Italy. I I heard that they were built in Italy, but you know, if they were built in Italy and then got to Portugal, I I don't know. Um, I don't know too much more about Columbus's trip. Mm. Um, have you read those books uh, by Patrick O'Brien? Uh, you've seen that movie probably Master and Commander. Oh, with, about uh, with Russell yeah. Crowe. About yeah, about sailing around the world or something. No, like no, he he oh. was he was a British a British uh, sailing captain. They called him Lucky Jack Aubrey, and he was. Um, the, the way this came about uh, is that O'Brien got interested in writing and ships, and he took a British admiral and read his, uh, what you call it, logs and the actions and things and the, where they were and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And he, he, wrote, he wrote 17 novels with particular characters and he portrayed the English Navy and its battle with the Napoleonic uh, French Navy. And it was so popular that um, uh, a, uh, a couple of guys started taking all the terminology, the sailing terminology, and they wrote a, a uh, a, a gazetteer or lexicon, whatever you want to call it, dictionary called the Sea of Words, and uh, that uh, that was helpful. You know, if you didn't know what I don't know what a gunnel was or a box, yeah. uh, bowsprit or fore topsail or top gallant or something like that. And then there was another couple of guys that that wrote a um, uh, uh, geography based on all those actions. And uh, that, that was, it, it was, I guess you would call it a, a historical novel. And so you got a lot of truth, but you got the flavor of being in the Navy, fighting well, and naval know, actions and stuff like that. It was really quite good. You know, the, 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 um, the thing about the uh, Fletcher Christian. All right. Bounty. The bounty. Yeah, that kind of changed the attitudes of the Royal Navy. Um, In what but, way? Well, <clears throat> Bly was such a enforcer. And taskmaster, yeah. Taskmaster. Unforgiving. Yes, and that uh, that changed a lot um, after that. I mean, first off, they never found, <laughs> they never got to Fletcher Christian. Um, Who's they? The Royal Navy, when they were what looking for him when they were looking for him after oh 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 okay i'm sorry i was thinking captain bly but fletcher after christian the, after the uh uh right the incident, mutiny the mutiny uh of course pitcairn island was not on any map so if you know i think they eventually stumbled onto it but you know by that time fletcher christian was long gone the bet they they burned the bounty so that nobody could leave. Um, what year was that? Do you remember? No. It's probably eighteen seventies. I think it's probably eighteen seventies. No, couldn't be. Because in well, eighteen seventies we were already through a civil war. So? So I think it was before that, Dick. Hang on. Hey, Siri, when was the mutiny on the bounty take place? It happened.
Opened April 28, 1789. <laughs> 1789. April 28, 1789. Hmm. Wow. And that's that's before the war with the United States or the colonies and before right. Napoleon. Uh, 1776. No, that was 1879. Did he say? No, no, 17. This was 1789. 1789. Yeah. So that's after, that was, the, after the war with the colonies. Right. And before the War of 1812, where they tried to invade us again. Yeah. Well, the British Navy was really a harsh taskmaster. Right. They, and, that's, uh, and that's why a lot of the uh, pirates were uh, former British Navy. Yeah. 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 I got, you know, I didn't know that they elected their own captain. You may yeah. be captain today and one of the crew tomorrow. Yeah, it was pretty democratic, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they had rules, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> what do you mean, whatever? They had well, rules. Yeah. Yeah, you don't I, mess. I, you don't mess with women, and <laughs> uh, unless I'm sure. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah, we 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 took the. Were you on that class cruise to the uh, Bahamas? Yeah. See. Yeah. Where were you? Flaked out somewhere. No, I was there. There were yeah, just I so many. Were. There were so many people. I mean, we we were sort of looking at that as a pirate haven, or uh, yeah, but you know, uh, close the dry close tortugas, to the dry tortugas, yeah, which is that's down Florida, the, that's, that's in the Gulf of Mexico, on the other side, yeah, yeah, down the Gulf of Mexico. Um, Was that a pirate haven at one time? Yeah. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Morgan. Morgan was on. Uh, oh, what the hell was he? He was governor there, Sir Henry Morgan. Uh, the rum. The guy. The rum's named after. Yeah. It Never must have. Been. Yeah, but just one of those Caribbean islands. It doesn't yeah. matter. I wouldn't remember. Um. Anyhow, you know, half to th that was another thing was on the other night was uh, the island that he was on where half of it went into the sea due to a, a earthquake. Oh, really? Yeah, it seems that the island sits right between the Caribbean shelf and the North American shelf. Hmm. And they've been rub, rubbing against each other for some time. And the first thing they heard was the uh, rumbling up in the mountains. They heard a rumble coming from the mountains. And the next thing, the, the, uh, the streets started opening up and the, uh, uh, the sand and the water ba basically mixed together and uh, dissolved the land dissolved the land and what was what hadn't slid off the shelf so good portion of it slid off the shelf along with one of the forts that was there there were three wow. forts on the on the on the peninsula where now where was this oh uh, was one of the caribbean islands oh uh, yeah i think so uh, was was it the same island that Captain Morgan was governor? Yes. Okay. Yes. We um, have to go. We have to have to keep going back here. Hey Siri, where was the island of which Captain Morgan was the governor? I found this on the web. I have to read it. Okay. Oh, was it Jamaica? I don't know. Let's see. Ha! Sir Henry Morgan was Welsh. 
1635, 25 to 1688. Plantation over, you're right, Jamaica, Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica. From his base at Port Royal, Jamaica, he raided settlements and shipping on the Spanish main, wherever that is, becoming the wealth, uh, becoming wealthy as he did so. With the prize money from the raids, he purchased uh, three large sugar plantations on the island. Cool. That's neat. Jamaica, yeah. Jamaica so, and uh, so Trinidad, I guess the, Tobago. Trinidad, Tobago, huh? Yeah. What Jamaica What do you mean, the, and and what Trinidad. What is What do you he there was, was governor the there too. In the same same area. Jamaica There's, and Trinidad. Trinidad's off the coast of South America. Yeah, that's where they were. Well, Jamaica's quite a quite a ways north of that. Yeah. All I know is that there were uh, the island that they were on. There's another island close to it. But when they say, who Morgan or the pirates? Who are you talking about? I can't follow you. Your oh, brain's okay. way ahead of me. Uh, Jamaica, and there's another island north of it. I say north of it. And I say, I don't know what the distance is because when you- The Dominican Republic. I thought, well, I thought that I thought that was Dominican Republic, Haiti and Dominican Republic were west of Jamaica. Well, they're and Cuba's same island. west of that. I, that same island. Now, how you get two different countries out of the same island? You know, it's cut in half. Yeah. I mean, it just got a boundary. Um, the island of Hispaniola, if you remember Treasure Island. Well, you're teaching me something new there. I didn't know that. I haven't read uh, Treasure Island lately. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever read it. Uh, let's see. Can't remember where I put my map. Anyway, I've got some. Oh, before I go, and I have yeah. to go here shortly. Um, yeah. I'm reading a great book that it's more in the modern era. It's a submarine captain book. It's, it's called um, Kilo Class. And the basic, uh, I have learned a tremendous amount from this book. See, Kilo um, Class, that's a Russian submarine. It's a World War II vintage uh, diesel type. It's not a, it's not a nuclear type. Anyway, point point being Russia was selling China uh, 10 submarines and the United States didn't want China to block up the China Sea or get control over it totally the, because of Taiwan and how in, in South Korea, etc. So anyway, they were knock the US was black ops knocking off the submarines as they were being, as they sailed to from Russia to China. Hmm. So the first time they caught them, they caught them off of Greenland, between Greenland and uh, Iceland and the UK. The second time uh, the, the submarines were being built interior Soviet Union or Russia, I can't remember, the, I think it was Soviet Union, anyway, they put them on barges and they were carrying them to the sea. They sent in seals and it was very, very clever how they got the seals in and out. But they they put charges on the barges, just dumped the submarines over. And at the very end of the book, the uh, they were taking a flotilla escorting the last submarines. They had a tremendous, um, what do they call it, icebreaker, heavy duty icebreaker. And they were gonna take a great circle path from the North Sea uh, to the Pacific Ocean 
and uh, I have I've never heard of that being just an ice pack. I thought there was land in there. I know you can go under the ice pack, but uh, well, it's really, really a cool book. And I want to go look at the a great circle route. Does is this book fiction or is it? Yeah, it's it's a novel. Oh, okay, it's a novel. But it's 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 sort of like one of those hardcore lot of technical truth. Like Hunt for Red October. Yeah, yeah, that same author. And, what uh, Clancy? Red, Do Red Dawn. Red October. Uh, Red Dawn Rising. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one? I read a oh, couple of his. Yeah, he he got old. That was Tom Clancy. Right. So anyway, yeah. I just recommend that book. It's, I got it from our public library in oh. an audio book form. It's really good. Did you, uh, did you see Reds, the movie Reds? Reg? Reds. R -E Reds, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Russian invasion of the United States. No, no, no. The uh, one with Bruce Bruce Willis and uh, shoot, I can't think of the other guy's name. But anyhow, they are being tracked by the CIA as they who these two him guys and his, him and his buddy from back yeah. in the day because they know about a guy running for president that wiped out a village in South America somewhere. And basically the thing of it is, is they're being chased by the CIA. But what I was gonna to get to is that some of the footage, would, do you know uh, that Clancy's home is called the Eagle's Nest? And it sits no. up on a bluff in Maryland. Yeah. And they shot yeah. part of it there. Really? Yeah. Really? So it shows his house. <laughs> now, I can't say for the interior shots, but the exterior shots is Clancy's Eagle's Nest. Yeah, I, re I remember hearing hearing that um, the, the hero of, I can't remember his name, of some of those uh some of those books live there with his surgeon wife and kids and I'm trying to remember his name anyway i'm gonna have to run it was okay. a good session we'll We're talk to you later here. yeah i'll be here next week most likely yeah well maybe i will be too okie dokie if the snow Bye -bye. Fall. huh i say i'll be here too if the snow don't fall oh yeah yeah. See you later. All right, Dick. Take it easy. Look at it. <laughs>